video. This week is all about the interior of our beautiful caravan, which is our home on wheels. It is a 22 foot off grid family bunk caravan, but we have upspecced it to a trooper. So we'll start off in the front. Um, so for standard, we have these beautiful leather pouches that Lotus have done um, above the door and on the side of the petition. For the door, we also have this blind. This did come standard with Lotus as well, and then just a standard handrail. In the step of our van, we also use our muck mat. At the front here, we do have our C-zone panelling. So I think Mark's done a bit of a video on this, but pretty much just tells us everything, our power, and then we've got all of our water tanks drinking and grey water. Um, we're off grid at the moment, so grey water needs to be emptied soon. <laughs> um, so that's got that powers everything. Moles will go through more of that later on in the video because he's going to go through our massive and a drive monster pack that Lotus have have um, paired up with and a drive. So it's huge. So then moving on, we've got our TV. We did upgrade this one, so. Um, it's slightly bigger and it's the smart TV version. We store all of our remotes here on Velcro tabs. So we've got TV and then the Yetcon. Um, we just store some hats up here. It's just the, the 3M brand. And then Miles has a fusion lock here for his work uniform. The massive windows on each side of our bed are standard as well, and they're just the magnetic. Uh, so moving on, we've got our cabinet tree for of our clothing. Um, so each side has little um, cabinets. Then we have the drawers and inside. So this one's mine. It's yeah, my clothes, and then I still work from home remotely, so I've got all my work equipment, like computer stuff in there. Um, Miles did retrofit the shelving. We didn't do that through Lotus because we, it's just too expensive. So, something you can do, you just go to Bunnings, and then Miles just cut it all up for us. And then we've got overhead cupboards as well, which you could actually fit quite a lot because they're actually quite deep. Something that we had a big disagreement on, but I won, um, was the front window. So we did add that. Um, unfortunately, obviously when you're watching TV, it can be a little bit annoying um, if you have the blind up, but otherwise if you're leaning against the panel, it's fine. But it lets a lot of air flow in and it's really nice. Each side of our pillows, we have charging points. On my side, I have the radio. And on Miles' side, he has the CISO paneling with all our modes. So they came standing. We've got these really nice lights. So you got blue and why didn't I go blue? Oh, sorry, that's the blue. <laughs> that's the white. And then we've also got the speakers. And the white's dimmable. Yeah, the white light is dimmable. Uh, each side also came with these leather pockets. They're standard through Lotus. Our bed is a queen size bed and we did pay to upgrade these mattresses. So all of the mattresses in the caravan are upgraded to the pillow top. And they're comfortable, they're actually really good. Much better than our old van. Um, next thing we've got Sirocco fans. Uh, so the Lotus comes with three fans. Oh, one. Sorry, so Lotus comes with one fan as standard. So we added the two. We really love having these in the center here because you can have them in the kitchen or you can have them directly on us in bed at night. So it's probably one of my favorite things. I think it's much better than having them in the corners because they're more utilized. Something that we would have loved to have seen or been given the option is to move these charging points. This is really squeaky. Mm. Is to uh, move these charging points. I don't like charging things and having cords around my head when I'm sleeping. <laughs> um, so, I fi Miles thinks that, you know, you might be able to fit them in here or even just on the side here, you know, because then you can use your little bedside table 
with the cords and your phone since it's not all hanging right there. I feel like it's a fire hazard. Um, yeah, but that's all here. Each side of the beds also have double power points. Uh, this bedside here, we've got the Carafan switch, which should be set up with the C-Zone, but for some reason it's not. We're going to work with loaders and see if we can sort that out. Um, and then this light switch here is to turn the bathroom light on. So that's really good at night, but I don't use it anymore and I'll show you why, because I've got a really cool rechargeable light in there. Uh, I've just got another hook for my scarf and another hook for my handbag. There's, there's hooks everywhere and then another one for my hat. Uh, yep. Then we've got the King Jack antenna for the TV. So it's one of the new um, black ones. I'll pop a picture up for you and you just turn it and there's an app on your phone that tells you uh, what angle or degree to have the jack on. Is that right? Mm. So, as I said before, we have a carafan. So, here's the carafan up here. Uh, we have our fusion sound system here, which is really nice. We've got speakers inside and outside, and there's three controllers. So, the one at the bed, one here, and then one outside. Uh, we also have our trauma. Trauma? <laughs> I'm such a nurse. We have the trauma um, gas heater. So we're really excited about that. We tested it out last night and it works really well. Uh, last time in our old van, we had the diesel, a really cheap diesel heater and it was terrible. So this one's got the thumbs up from us. We have the beautiful leather couch and detail here, which was standard. And then the large table, which swivels and turns and up and down, all standard. Uh, then we've got our cabinetry. Uh, so we use the little one for our medications. Electronic boxes, Tupperware, and then just more storage, really. We're finding that as the longer we live in the van, you know, more things disappear. And yeah, we're finding that we're having more space, which is good. Um, we've got my little fruit hanger that I made. <laughs> it's too big. I've got to make another one. Third time lucky. First one I made was too small. This one's now too big. So... I'll get there eventually, but that's just on a fusion lock as well. So here we have the 225 litre fridge. We did pay to upgrade this one. Um, so it comes with the freezer and the very large fridge space inside. Um, it is magnetic, so some fridges are not magnetic. So I've got my calendar picture and my adventure weight sticker here. I get a lot of questions about my sticker, so I'll pop the link below, but it is from Adventure Weights. Um, underneath here, we also have our water system. So we've got our drinking water and then our normal water there. All right, so back up to here, we've got the large skylight. Again, it's got both um, blinds and it's got the LED light as well. Uh, then we've got the microwave. We don't use a lot, but when you want it, like it's good to have it. So people use it for storage and things, but we still kind of do, I guess. It's where we store our tissue and breads. So that's all in there. We've got our toilet, uh, not toilet, what is it? Paper holder here. This one's just from Big W. It was like $4. Do you recommend popping a rubber band though? Otherwise it just falls out. Not a great design, but it works. Uh, this is where we store um, our Netgear internet. And you've got the stove point, double power point, And again, you've got the charging point. I would recommend if you were building this van to ask Lotus to move this point from here up to here, because it kind of just makes this whole section really unusable. Uh, so yeah, that's that one. We've got our coffee machine here. Sorry, so this charging point, the USB point, was actually underneath the couch next to the double power point here. But I think up here is much better and more usable. But I would like it up further. <laughs> um, we got our coffee machine. We did have this secured with baby straps, but we have since learnt 
unfortunately they're not the greatest <laughs> it did move quite a bit so oh, we're the... probably gonna dine a bolt it we had, a, we had a lot of weather and a hot weather and it kind of just all peeled off it wasn't great so back to the drawing board to secure that one we've got our small fusion lock here and all of our black beautiful black tap where it's all standard through lotus at the front here we have our three drawers so you got your cutlery drawer i don't have a lot of brocker one's actually coins for laundry so all your one dollars fit perfectly in there and you'd be surprised at how much money fits we've got that one this is where we store some more stuff and then your big like pot drawer is down here Underneath the sink, we've got another large cupboard. So, we just put our bin and tea towels and whatever we can fit underneath behind the piping. So we've got our cups up here, all of our electronics, and then our plates. These are our chopping boards, and then the iPads. Window is standard through Lotus as well. Um, you will see that we do not have a cooktop. So it was not originally in the plan to go this way. We did have an induction cooktop in the plans. Unfortunately, they didn't have any stock when they came to building the van. Um, so we we're given a few options from Lotus and we agreed that we would just buy our own portable cooktop and they would install a PowerPoint for us up here to use. There's no PowerPoint. So at the moment we're using an extension lead and we've just got Thermomix here. We do have a cooktop that we do pull out um, so we can cook that, you know, inside or outside, which we really like having that um, option. Yeah, if we were to build the van again, I would just do this from the get go. We've really loved having the extra space because it means, you know, we can leave our dish rack out because, you know, you don't have the cooktop here. So I really do like what we've done and we like being able to cook outside or on the kitchen table if we want to yeah yeah uh then we've got the thetford oven a lot of people you either love an oven or you don't it's massive i do a lot of bread baking um yeah we we gen like at home we generally use the oven every couple of nights so i think it just depends on your own lifestyle and your own cooking so for us we wouldn't go without our oven uh, underneath here there is another slide drawer where I keep all of my um, pans and things. Then we've got the spice rack um, which we really just use for all of our oils. Uh, then we've got the pantry which is actually quite large. It's very deep so don't put regularly used items at the back. <laughs> yeah. A lot, of, a lot of our stuff is from, because obviously we've moved from our house to the caravan, so we have a lot of food, you know, that you wouldn't normally buy for camping. So we're slowly getting through it all and decreasing. So, yeah, that's why that's really full. Underneath here is also another, like, secret cupboard. So Lotus have really utilised all of their space. So pretty much we just store toilet paper in every cranny. Um, but we always make sure we keep our gas detector free. Then we have our Dometic Aircon. Um, this one works really well. I think it's the same as the one we had in our Jayco as well. I think uh, the only uh, something about the kitchen also is there is an excessive amount of lights. So you've got uh, the six down lights and then you've got LED strip along the top of each cupboard as well. Um, at first I thought it was a massive overkill, but what we've done is we've changed the lead lighting to be like an amber light um, by chucking some yellow electrical tape up top. So it helps with any bug, what is it, bug control <laughs> when um, it gets close to sunset. All right, so into the kids section, we've got the double bunks because we've only got the two girls. Um, we paid to have the ladder inbuilt, which I really love and I wouldn't change because the ladders that it comes with is really not not very safe for, for the age group of kids that we've got. 
and they come out on like a bit of an angle and you lose yeah, that walking space. Yeah, that's right. So it comes out at an angle as well. So you're just walking around a ladder, which in our Jayco we had, it was annoying. Um, though, when you do have the inbuilt ladder, make sure you consider when you have to make the beds. <laughs> so it's made making this bed a little bit harder because you can't really pull the mattress out. But otherwise, I would still recommend getting the ladder. Each of the kids' bunks, so originally our plan was to have like little square windows. We paid to upgrade these to large windows. Which is now standard. Which is now standard, yay. <laughs> So these are the inner spring pillow top mattresses as well, same as ours. Uh, the one thing though that we didn't realise was how much higher or thicker the mattress is. So because it's this much higher, it actually cuts into the window. Um, so we're not really sure how you could fix it because you can't move the window up because of the awning. So the only way you could make that any better would be to move the actual bunk down a little bit to cater for it but or move the awning up on the outside yeah or mo move the awning up on the outside I'm and then you sure. can move the window up but yeah it's something that would work with with lotus to fix if we were to build it again yeah yeah um another thing that we added was a sirocco fans to each bunk we did request these um fans to be on this wall because when Evelyn comes up into her bunk, she always hits her head. Um, I'm not sure why Lotus put them there. They're supposed to be here. But anyway, that's another thing. I mean, it doesn't really matter with Hazel because she's covered by here. Yeah, but yeah. Um, each bunk also comes with the dimmable lights, the charging points, which Hazel ripped her cover off straight away. <laughs> um, and the Lotus um, pouches. That's it there. Um, underneath the bunk, we've got access outside through the tunnel boot. Uh, then we've got the kids' um, cupboard. So we store all of our laundry in here, cleaning products, and then all their clothes. So our kids are very close in age. So we're quite lucky that they mostly just share clothes. Yay. <laughs> um, these are all from Kmart. So these are the C size and these are the B. Underneath we've got the 3.5 liter, uh, 3.5 kilo washing machine. It is quite small. I do not recommend filling it with clothes and then doing a load to save on water because it just doesn't wash. You really do just have to have it halfway, which makes everything a little bit longer, but is what it is. Um, then we've got our bathroom. So we're really excited. We actually just got these from New Life. So yeah, we used them for the first time this morning and yeah, they're really great. Um, we, this was thrown in for us. We requested the mirrored uh, door and then just our bathroom. So all the black was all standard and then they're just fusion locks from Bunnings. So with the shower head, we put it on this wall because the water sprays and hits the door um, and comes oh, yeah. out. So put the shower head on that wall and at the moment they've centered the shower rail and I would center the shower head itself. So could you stand off to the right and it's a, a bit annoying at times, but yeah, so shower head on that wall, uh, center the shower head and then move the drain from the inside of the caravan to the outside because um, when you're setting up um, really the grey water annoying. tank empties out that way so it, you're fighting each other trying to make it work. Yeah it doesn't, it wasn't very well thought out mm. if you ask me. <laughs> um, then we've got our overhead cupboards, they're actually quite large. I've got to go through it, I've got way too much. <laughs> uh, the mirror. Again, black sinkware. This is a fusion lock one. The kids are on a sleepover at the moment, so we don't have their stuff. And then, yeah, more in here. Um, it came standard with the toilet roll holder and the two towel holders. I don't really like these, especially when you're on the toilet, you've got towels in your face. <laughs> um, we've got the- yeah, For a family van, four hooks 
like this would be better. Yeah, and they're just fusion lock ones. Yeah. But you could have just had four hooks up here or something. Yeah, and that would have worked know. much better. Yeah. Then we've got our Dometic toilet. Nothing special about that one. Um, and your window. We've got... And there's a light switch in there to control. <laughs> yeah, so you've got the double power point and you've got your LED lights. And that's the same as the light switch from next to the bed. Yeah. Yeah, so they all work together. Um, this is the light that I was talking about. So this one here, it's just from Bunnings. It's magnetic. Um, it's Arlec. Yeah, and it is rechargeable and it's censored. So I'll just turn it on so you can see. But yeah, I just leave it on the censored one. So at night, it turns on for us and just lights up here, which is good because the kids' bunks are directly across from the bathroom. You don't have the big light blinding them. Oh. But that's it. Um, Miles is going to go through the... What was it? The monster pack? All right, so this is the heart of the uh, the van. So we're pretty happy with it. It's worked really well so far. Uh, we haven't had any issues with it and we've actually done a couple of little helpful videos on it. Uh, if you're interested, head over and check them out. So it's a 900 amp uh lithium power pack so we've got three 300 amp uh energy drive btec batteries we've got the 2600 watt inverter 100 amp ac energy drive charger two 40 amp solar mppt chargers so we've got the two 40 amp MP mppt chargers as well as uh the dc to dc uh 40 amp plus charger uh for the car so we also have an external solar uh, input and I'm pretty sure it's hooked up to the DC to DC charger but I haven't tested that out yet. Uh, at the moment, we're not overly impressed with our solar input figures but um, I've been playing around trying to work out why that is but um, we've got five 200 watt panels on the roof and uh, I was expecting some better numbers than what we've been seeing but we haven't had a problem with power so far. It just takes a lot longer to get up than I thought it would. Um, no issues with the system so far at all. It's worked really, really well and we've been able to use um, every appliance we want when we're off grid and we've never had an issue with power. Not a lot to talk about on the system. It, it is a great system. Uh, Lotus and NN Drive have done really well putting this together. As you can see, everything's pretty neat and tidy under here. Uh, we do lose all our storage, which is uh, a bit disappointing um, as this is a good, easy access place to store stuff, but uh, I don't know where else we'd be able to fit it. Because uh, as you see under the the bench seat, by the time you got our hot water system and our gas heater with all our water tank plumbing, uh, we've lost a lot of things. But yeah, if you've got any more questions on the power pack system, uh, let us know and we'll reach out to Enerdrive if we can't answer it and we'll get back to you. But it is a great system. If you're on edge about upgrading it, uh, I definitely recommend if you can squeeze it in your budget to put it in because uh, then everything's, everything's done through the build and it works really well. All right, so a few people have asked us some questions from our last video. Uh, so one of the main questions was, why did we go with Lotus in the end? Then yeah, well. I feel like, so as you know, we did um, have to deposit down for another Jayco and we were really happy with that decision because we loved our first Jayco. And then we went to the full, uh, the caravan camping show and we started looking around and you just couldn't fault the quality um, and the off-grid specs um, of the Lotus. So that's why we ended up going Lotus, really. Yeah, there was lots of things. So with Jayco, they were just were hesitant to let us change anything um, away from their spec plan. So we wanted to have a big power system. We wanted to, you know, um, we really wanted the air suspension and the disc brakes on the van because um, we've had problems with the drum brakes on the Jayco where you just get mud and stuff stuck in them and it causes you problems. So, mm. you know, when we when we started to look at the price of the Jayco and then we were going to go and, you know, rip the standard suspension out, put new suspension under, rip the battery system out that they've put in, put a new battery system in, we started to go, well, the costs are now getting up there for the Jayco and then, you know, we were going to lose all our manufacturer's warranty essentially on all the stuff that we were ripping out. So. Mm. We started to piece all that together, and um, Jayco just didn't want to didn't want to do any of it. So no, we... and also like with Jayco, it's very cookie cutter. You get like two color options, and that's it. Where with Lotus, there were like 
so many different colours of bench tops, of leather, of, you know, cabinetry. You know, just being able to customise and make it your own and make it your home um, was really important as well because it just made everything a bit easier moving in because it was something that we had involvement in when designing. Yeah, it was the same as building a house essentially. Yeah. We got to choose everything, which was really good. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, we when we bought our first Jayco, we did gravitate towards Lotus all the way back then, uh, except it was just out of our price point. And yeah, and it was our first caravan. We'll like just start off small and yeah. go from there. Yeah, and um, so that's that's how we gravitated back to Lotus. You know, we just come back. We really liked them. Mm -hmm. um, we could have squeezed it in the budget this yeah. time. Not so, affordable, yeah. but. We made it work. <laughs> so we got it in there. Um, I don't think it would be, we definitely would not have spent this kind of money for a weekender. Like, we, I just, I no, would not have. No, no. you couldn't. You, when you're spending the money that we have for this van, it's for full-time travel or for big trips yeah. to make it all worth it. Because, yeah, like we exceeded 150 grand, which is a lot of money. For the van? Yeah. No, I think we were just under. No, it wasn't. It was $154,000. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. And, you know, you just wouldn't invest that kind of money for a weekend. I mean, if you can, great. But, yeah, we definitely could not justify that cost. <laughs> yeah. And we had questions why, um, why we didn't go with the other um, competitive caravan uh, manufacturers. Yeah. For Lotus, and we did look at them, and we did. Um... Some of them were like, yeah, you know, like Sunseeker was more expensive. By the time you actually added some of the extras um, that Lotus already included, yeah. So each each caravan manufacturer is a bit different on their inclusions. It's exactly the same as building a house, but yep. um, at the end of the day, when we come down to it, this this was a plan that we liked. We could option everything we liked, and. Um, Lotus held the price, so that was yeah. one of the big things. Like as we went through the build process, because it was 18 months, uh, Lotus didn't hit us with a price rise once, and um, we've had friends that have built through other caravan manufacturers, and they've been hit with price rises uh, through the build process as well. So yeah. that was another big thing um, that we were really happy about with our decision in the end, mm -hmm. um, and it's another thing to factor in. Um, in this current market, I think a lot of people are getting hit. Um, with price rises and when you've committed to you know eight months or nine months of waiting it's it could make or break well you know? it broke us when we were trying to build a house yeah like you know we just kept getting price rise after price rise and eventually we just pulled out yeah. and that's why we're doing what we're doing now because it pushed us out of the market mm. you know and yeah. we weren't first home buyers so yeah yeah so we could have felt like the customer service for Lotus has been great Lawrence RVs were great to Lawrence deal with RV if you are, awesome. are looking for a good dealership um, that's with Lotus because I have heard that some aren't great. Mm. Um, definitely reach out to the guys at Lawrence RVs. Um, yeah, Sarah really and great. Jason were great for us to deal with. We had no issues with them at all. No, it's a family run business so yeah, you're literally dealing with the owners. So yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Mm. No, I really um, love it. Um, it's like anything no. that you build there's always you know dents or something missing or yeah, like obviously with everything, there's always going to be some form of warranty work, but you know, we just let them know and they say, no worries, we'll fix it for you. So again, same with our Jayco, you know, yeah. these things happen and they're being fixed or being dealt with. So we can't fault them in that aspect at all. Yeah. Anyone who thinks they're going to get a handmade product without any issues, it's uh, kidding, are, themselves. Are kidding themselves. <laughs> and if they want it, like, there's no point in getting on social media and whinging about it. No. Nah. Just reach out to the companies. They'll fix it. And they'll fix it. Um, well, they'll do everything they can to help you. So, mm -hmm. um, luckily for us, we've had no major issues and we can keep traveling. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, we've just organized for it all to get fixed in our 12-month service, which is really good. Yeah. But, yeah, again, um, everything we've done to the van, all the mods we've done, we'll definitely do them again with some of those extra things uh, that we talked about through the videos. Yeah. But, um... I don't, I don't think we'd change too much. It has been a great van. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Overall, it's functional and it works. Yeah. So. I definitely would try and work um, <clears throat> with Lotus to somehow move the batteries, possibly to under the couch, um, and then move the hot water system maybe so you don't lose all that space. Uh, I'd definitely try and like to get the, the space back under the bed somehow. 
Yeah, yeah, we just don't have any storage space. And a lot of people rely on the storage space under the bed. And yeah, we just did not have that. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's, it's about bulky storage. So we've got nowhere yeah. to put bulk, we've got storage space, we just got nowhere to put bulky stuff, like big things. So if we, um, you know, had um, like, back, yeah. back seal bags, we got nowhere to put them really, because yeah. Yeah, we, and we did stack have, them under the bed. Yeah, we did have some leg burst, so we've just got rid of that gear. We just don't carry snow gear with us anymore, so yeah, that um, storage space is definitely gone and something that is missed. Yeah. But if you have any more questions about the interior of the caravan, make sure you pop the comments down below or reach out to us on social media. Thanks again for watching guys and we can't wait to see you guys next week. And if you love what we're doing, make sure you subscribe as it really does help out our channel. Thanks what? guys, see you next time. What? You did such a good job. Why are you impressed. laughing then? I was so happy with you. I was like, she got on her first go. <laughs>